hope no one gets mad at me. I just wanted to learn a little bit more about like little Satan. It all started because I wanted to know why Lucifer and Satan were called the same thing and then he was the devil and it just kept going and going and I just really wanted to learn more and then I found out about Dante's Inferno and I was like, why does no one ever talk about this? And then I was researching the Bible and I was like, wow, there's a lot of really weird stuff in the Bible, but maybe we'll talk about that another day. But today let's just talk about Satan and then it just kept rabbit holing and people really say that they like my rabbit holes so I just decided to rabbit hole out loud and kind of research it with you guys and please let me know if you like I don't know what that was that was that was really odd I'm sorry please, please still like me hello spooky friends Satan now bear with me I was always curious about why Satan was called Lucifer and Lucifer was called Satan and so on and so forth. So I dug a little deeper. This was just my way of researching something and kind of thinking out loud. Turns out the story of Satan that we all know may not be exactly as it seems. Everyone knows the lore. Lucifer was an angel who disobeyed God and as punishment he was sent to hell. An endless pit of torture and suffering. Where all the bad boys and the bad girls go, if you misbehave according to the will of God. And that hell has many layers, up to nine. The most fiery and torturous being at the bottom. But is that true? I just want you to take this as a alternative story and try not to get too mad. And don't come for me. In fiction, he's portrayed as the leader of hell. But is he? Funny enough, researching the Bible, it actually states that God is the ruler of all realms. So how could Satan or Lucifer actually be the ruler of hell? And Satan didn't create hell, God did, because God created all. So how is it possible that Satan is the ruler of hell when God created everything and is the ruler of all? It's that dichotomy in the Bible that makes me question what is actually written. The belief in God, I get it, I understand. But the belief in the Bible is a whole other ball of wax. Stay with me on this. Some interpretations state that the creation of hell was solely for the purpose of punishing Lucifer and other angels who fell from God's grace and broke his rules or defied him. And just to understand the whole Satan, Lucifer, Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub business, I dug a little deeper and it was tough to find actually. Some biblical scholars state that the name Lucifer is more of a definition of what he looked like, what he appeared to be, the morning star or the bright shining light. So that's where the name Lucifer comes from. And this is why the devil is often referred to as Lucifer, though they are typically not actually the same thing. Lucifer is an angel being punished by God. He was originally known as Hasatan, a term that simply translates as the adversary. And in the Bible, his provenance and attributes or powers are not really clearly defined. It's only much later through Dante Alighieri, a 12th century Italian poet, that we start to learn about the definition of this Lucifer Satan guy. And especially through the view of Milton, we see Satan as a winged creature, powerful, the king of hell, with other names like the Prince of Darkness, Beelzebub, Mephistopheles, the Lord of the Flies, which I've never heard, the Antichrist, the Father of Lies, Moloch, or just simply Satan. According to the book of Revelation, Lucifer is caught by other angels and by God punishing him, flinging him into an endless pit for a thousand years. With the completion of his sentence, he raised revolt against God. And at this point, he and his followers are sent to the pit of hell for eternal torment on the lake of fire. But at no point in the story does Satan desire to reside in hell, let alone be the king of hell. Dante explains Satan as powerless and somewhat dim-witted, but also emotionally distraught. When Dante sees Satan, he's hell's primary prisoner, weeping, eternally forced to devour the souls of sinners who committed acts of betrayal or worse in their lifetime. This story reinforces the vision that Satan is a prisoner in hell, rather than the man in charge. When he reaches the final level of hell, Satan is stuck waist deep in a frozen lake, which contradicts popular interpretations of what hell would be. And with the constant flapping of his wings and desperate attempts to escape, 
the lake freezes even more, trapping him further and longer. This is what reinforces the theory that Satan is a prisoner, not the ruler of hell, forced to devour the souls such as Brutus, Cassius, and Judas. Oh, Judas. Another story is that Satan was in the Garden of Eden, stated in the story of Genesis. He becomes jealous of the beauty that God bestows on man. And this is where the story of him rebelling against God comes in. Rebellious in nature, Lucifer. Even in this story, God and Satan temporarily share the authority over man before God strikes Satan down and sends him to hell. This is the part that doesn't make sense. If God is the ruler over all, and he has the authority over all, there's no way that Satan could be a ruler with him. Even Satan's portrayal as the smooth master manipulator, intent on perverting human souls for his own design, is contested in Dante's poem Inferno, where he's simply a giant brute with three faces, six wings, and trapped in a lake of ice, incapable of any coercion. The sad part is if he stopped beating his wings, the ice would simply melt and he'd be free. This frustrating paradox renders Satan as more of a buffoon than a master manipulator. And originally, he was supposed to be society's mentor. He betrayed his wards, possibly for taking the garden, which was so beautiful, for his own. Or he just simply wanted to corrupt God's creation. Whatever it was, he was cast out of heaven and punished. Nowadays, Satan is the personification of evil. Originally in the Tongue, he was a heavenly persecutor, a member of the sons of God subjugate to the Yahweh, testing Yahweh's followers' loyalty and causing them to suffer. There are many interpretations of Satan's beginnings, of his purpose, and of exactly what or who he is. But what's interesting to me is that his appearance is never actually suggested in the Bible. It's never talked about. It's only since the 9th century that Christians believe that he's this horned figure with hooved feet and red skin. Anything that would scare you into behaving. In Genesis, he's blamed for illness, sickness. Anything going on in your life, you blame it on Satan. Anything you do that's devilish, you blame it on Satan. So what are your thoughts? Is Satan truly evil? Is he truly something that should be feared? Or is he a misunderstood myth? In the medieval times, he was heavily demonized, for lack of a better word, and was to blame for many atrocities like the plague. Even the early Puritans of North America blame Satan for a lot of things that go wrong. So is he the ultimate scapegoat? And when depicted in religious texts, he changes. Mormonism completely made up exactly what they thought Satan would be. A whole new demon for a whole new book. So what exactly is the truth? Well, it depends on your beliefs. If you think that Satan is this horrible creature that causes you to do all the bad things in the world, then that's your scapegoat. But for me, In Islam, shaitan is not the cause of all evil. They don't regard Satan or shaitan as the cause of evil, but as a tempter who takes advantage of human inclination of self-centeredness. Now that I could get behind. In the Quran, he's stated to have the name Iblis, which is derived from the Greek word diabolos. The Baha'i also believe that Satan is more so not the cause of evil, but definitely a tempter, something that could sway you from the light. Theistic Satanism has Satan as a deity that they worship, that they supplicate to, where they believe that Satan is a real entity, like you might see with like the shadow man, but they want to worship to him and to please him. Oddly enough, atheistic Satanists believe that Satan is not a literal anthropomorphic entity, but a permeating and motivating force given many names by humans over time. But Satan is not viewed as a hubristic or irrational deity or negative force, but rather revered with a Prometheus-like attribute. As if his standing up to God was something to be revered, and he's a symbol of liberty and individual empowerment. I hope that makes people less scared of Satanists because I truly believe that they have a very positive view of what Satan might be. Although I know that scares a lot of people. This was Satan in a nutshell. I'm sure there's a lot more I could talk about, but I just wanted to get some thoughts out on it. Is he some perverting evil essence that is trying to take your soul and devour it? 
So what are your thoughts? Is Satan some evil deity obsessed with the thought of eating your soul? Or is he more of a symbol of individual empowerment? I'm sure that I'm somewhere in between on that because I'm more so a history person and I like facts. And if he looks anything like Tom Ellis, I'm okay with that too. Please put your comments in the comment section down below. Make sure to like and if you're not, please subscribe. And please let me know what you'd like to learn about next. I look forward to hearing from you. this deity that's awful and pulling you down and trying to hurt you. Wow, I went on a tangent.